Hi guys, Yasas Kekalos de Sata to another episode of Dimitra's Dishes. Today we're making little mini olive pies. In Greek, they're known as Eliopitakia. In Cyprus, they're known as Eliotes. It's delicious. Think pizza pockets. They're traditionally made, they're classically made vegan, but of course you can use your favorite ingredients to stuff these with. They're so good. Serve them as an appetizer at your holiday party and people are going to go crazy. Let's get started. So I'm using my tabletop mixer because the, the, the crust of this, the pie crust, is basically bread and it's my favorite bread recipe that I've used over and over again. It never fails. One and a half cups of lukewarm water. One and a half teaspoons of active dry yeast. Two teaspoons of sugar. And over here, the dry ingredients, I have four cups of all-purpose flour. That is 630 grams. And I also have one and a half teaspoons of salt. Before I mix it together, I'm going to add a few um, tablespoons of the salt just so that way you can feed the yeast. And I'm going to let the yeast mixture sit here for about seven, eight minutes or until it's activated. You'll know it's active when a cloudy, um, when a cloud, basically a foamy cloud, appears on the top of the mixture. If that doesn't happen, it really not it really doesn't happen but if it doesn't happen that means that your yeast is bad and you're going to have to get a fresh batch of yeast and start all over otherwise the bread won't rise now if you use your yeast a lot and you know that it's active you could skip this step and basically throw all of the ingredients in the mixer and knead it for about 12 minutes if you're using bread flour you can knead it for 10 minutes if you're kneading this by hand you're going to have to knead it longer about 20 minutes so I know that this yeast is good because I've been making bread every other day, you guys. <laughs> so that's that. I'm also going to add a quarter of a cup of olive oil. We finally have olive oil in our shop. This comes from my dad's village in Kriti. It is delicious. Check it out on the website. We're going to need a quarter cup. And I'm going to add all of the flour ingredients to this. And we're going to knead it for 12 minutes. All right, put a little bit of olive oil in the bowl and then transfer the dough into the bowl. And just coat it in the oil. Cover it with plastic or with a clean kitchen towel and put it in the warmest room of your house for about an hour and a half or two hours or as long as it takes for this to double in volume. All right, so now it's time to make the filling and for the filling you're gonna need an onion that's been finely chopped. A medium-sized onion is going to be good enough. This is going to add some sweetness. Uh, olives tend to have a bite to them, and this just really mellows them out, so don't leave it out. Okay, I'm going to season the, the onion with a little pinch of salt and about 3-4 tablespoons of olive oil. And I'm gonna cook these over medium heat until they're nice and soft and golden. Next, I have three scallions that I've washed really well and dried. And I'm just gonna thinly slice these. All the way down to the white parts. All the way down to the end, actually, to the root. Set those aside. Then we have lots of herbs. This gives so much freshness and flavor. I have a bunch of mint that I've washed, a little handful of parsley. I'm just gonna get the leaves off of the stems of the mint, and this adds so much freshness. Like I said, you can use basil, you can use rosemary, whatever your favorite herbs, use those dill. Mint and olives go really well together, so use mint and then any other combination of herbs that you like. I generally have parsley in my fridge all year round, so that's what I use. And then with herbs, if you just gather them all up together in a little bunch and chop them, it just goes by faster. And time for the olives. I have eight and a half ounces or 250 grams of Kalamata olives. These are already pitted. If you buy them pitted, it's gonna save you tons of time. Um, it's up to you if you wanna pit them yourself, that is fine too. Again, I'm using Kalamata olives, but you can use any combination of olives that you like. Green olives are also really nice, but these are traditional. And in my opinion, these, are have, these have the best flavor. So I'm just using these. And I'm just gonna go ahead and roughly chop these.
Okay, the onions look good. I'm going to turn off the heat and I'm going to add the scallions in here. And the residual heat is just going to help soften and soften them up a little bit. All right, so now I'm going to add the olives off of the heat and the herbs and give everything a nice mix. But before I do that, I'm going to add some freshly cracked black pepper. You can add some uh, crushed red pepper flakes in here. You can slice up a roasted red pepper straight from the jar and put it in here. That would be delicious. And if you don't want to keep it vegan, you can just crumble in some feta. The options are endless. If you have, again, if you don't want to keep it vegan and you have any leftover chicken, roasted chicken or anything like that, or any meat like that, you can put that in here. But I do like these to be more on the vegetarian side. You better believe I'm going to add feta cheese to at least half of them. But I'm going to keep half vegan because this filling is so flavorful that you will not miss uh, the cheese if you decide to leave it out. And it, is, it doesn't need any salt because olives are plenty salty. And that's it. The filling is ready. Now we're just going to assemble them. All right, so the dough is ready. It took an hour and a half to rise. What I like to do is I like to preheat my oven because it's gonna, these are gonna cook at 400 degrees anyway. And then I just put this on the stove top while the oven is preheating. Or a lot of times what I like to do is stick this in the dryer. I just run a dryer with some towels for about 10 minutes, some towels inside. Then I put the bowl in there to turn the dryer off and it just rises much faster. We're gonna cut this into 16 portions as equal as possible. So first cut each one into four and then each one of these into four and then you'll end up with 16. Okay, and we're just gonna roll each one of these into a little ball. You could do it in your hands or on the counter. And you wanna get them as round as possible. Now the oiler they are, the harder it's gonna be for them to roll out. So if you need to wipe your counter down a little bit, go ahead and do that or just roll them on the corner like I'm doing. Then just go ahead and roll each one out. You could press it out with your fingertips or whatever is easiest for you. You can do it with a rolling pin or just stretch it out with your hands to about four inches in diameter, just a four inch round circle. Just get it as big as you can so that we can hold a lot of delicious filling. You want these to be full of that olive and herb filling so that way it has lo loads and loads of flavor. So four inches is pretty good. Some of them are gonna be a little smaller, so. Let's see, this is a smaller one. It's still got to four inches, so it should be good. Between four to five inches, depends on how precise you were when you were separating the dough or dividing it. Okay, so now you're gonna take the filling, a heaping tablespoon at a time, and you're gonna put it on one side of the dough. Now I'm doing half of these just like this, and the other half, I'm gonna sprinkle some feta cheese on top, or I should say crumble some feta cheese on top but you can also throw in a little uh, teaspoon of harissa in here. The options are so many. <laughs> there are so many options to do this. There's not just one right way. This is the classical traditional way, just with the plain olives. And like I said before, this is good enough. There's so much flavor in this filling that you really don't need anything else. Oh, this pan is heavy. But if you wanna spruce it up and make it a little bit customized, maybe your kids like tomato sauce and mozzarella, you can add that in here. Let me know how you're making it in the comments. Yum, that looks and smells delicious. Now I have a little bit of feta cheese here and I'm just gonna put some feta on, like I said, as many of these as I can. And if you don't wanna make these in little individual portions like I'm doing, you could just do a big, you just roll this up and cut this into two portions and then um, make one big bread out of this, like one big flat bread, that'll work too. But I just think these are better. You know, if you're serving these at a dinner party, your guests can just pick one up and it's easier to serve. You don't have to worry about cutting it or slicing it. I 
that's it. <laughs> Let's save some without to make without feta. And then you take the half that doesn't have the filling and you roll it over just like that. You pinch the edges together and then you take a fork and you just press the edges down. It makes this decorative little border and it also seals it together. Then put it on a baking tray that's lined with parchment paper. Do the same thing with all of them. Now the ones that have feta, I'm gonna separate. So these right here are the ones without the cheese and these are with the feta cheese. <laughs> okay, so now I'm just gonna poke them with a fork on top so that way the steam can have a chance to escape, but that's not really working. <laughs> I will cut a little slit on top just to help the steam escape or you could just pour, poke it with a fork, not a fork, a knife. I'd rather poke it with a knife than to cut a slit on top. I don't want the filling to kind of come out. There we go. Then I'm gonna put some olive oil in this bowl, a ramekin, and I'm gonna brush the tops with the olive oil and sprinkle them with some black sesame seeds. You can use white sesame seeds or you can leave the sesame seeds out, up to you. Okay, so my oven is preheated to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. These are gonna go in and they're gonna bake for about 30 minutes or until they're beautifully golden all around. I'm using the center rack and the top rack and then I'm just gonna alternate the trays at about the halfway mark. So at the 15 minute mark, I'll switch their positions so that way they bake evenly because my oven does not have a fan. And once they're golden, take them out and let them rest for a good 10, 15 minutes before you serve them so all the juices can settle and the steam can settle and they'll just be perfect to eat. I do have some filling left over and I'm gonna save it in the refrigerator. This stays fresh for a week. You can put this in salads, you can boil some couscous and just mix it all together. You can mix it into pasta sauces, stews. The options are endless or you can just snack on it because it's so good. I'll show you what they look like as soon as they come out. Okay, so the Eliopitake are ready for the taste test. They've cooled to just the right temperature, still nice and warm. If you look, look at them all around, they're beautifully golden all around. The bottom is nice and toasted and so is the top. And if you look inside, it's gonna be nice and juicy. That filling is delicious. These are the ones with the feta cheese in it. Can't wait to try. Mmm. So delicious. Even though this is a bread dough, it tastes like pizza on the outside. It's so good. Bread pizza basically is a bread dough, but it's nice and light, you know what I mean? The filling is so flavorful. The herbs brighten it up, add so much freshness. I would add the feta cheese if you don't mind about keep, you know, making it vegan or anything like that. And if you want to serve this, with a nice marinara sauce that has a little bit of harissa in it, just like I made for my feta star bread. Make it and it's gonna go beautifully with this. I hope you guys give this a try. Guys, bread, cheese, and olives is a classic Greek breakfast. It's eaten all the time over there. We eat it, like I said, all the time. And if you put it all together, you just can't go wrong. Let me know how you guys are gonna make it in the comment section down below. All the exact measurements are on the website, DemetriusDishes.com. If you wanna learn how to make the feta star bread with that magical sauce, click over here and I'll see you right over there. Yes, us.